Hey everybody. So a really common question that I hear from folks is what's the best super resolution model to use? Um, a lot of folks try to use the ones inside runway. Um, and the truth is like I have, I don't really find a lot of the uh, open source sort of super resolution models to be that different. Um, some might work slightly better for other images versus other ones, um, but it's sort of up to you. But the thing I do recommend, and this is pretty much like across the board, um, the tool I actually most recommend for folks is a tool called Gigapixel AI. So we'll walk through this today. Um, and it's pretty much like hands down my favorite super resolution model. So uh, we'll take a look at this and I'll explain why and a couple other things. Um, so before we get started with that, I just want to give a, a big shout out to Alexia, Alicia, and Lucas, who recently became members of the channel. Um, once again, like I really, really appreciate uh, people supporting me through here. Um, it helps me keep making new content and other things. So, uh, you know, um, you get good uh, benefits for signing up as a member, discounts to my store, uh, early access to videos, those sort of things. So um, I want to just go shout out to those folks and say thank you. Um, so with that, let's take a look at Gigapixel AI. So I think I previously have done a video on how I use Gigapixel AI in my own work. Um, There's a video I probably did, God, probably a year ago now um, with some of my affordable floral works. But the really cool thing about Gigapixel AI is, uh, first off, they're training their models on, on really good data. Um, I assume that they work with professional photographers and have a bunch of really great data to work with. Um, they're also constantly iterating on the product. Like probably the interface that I showed uh, a year ago is very different from the interface they have today. Um, so I want to show like some of the reasons why I think this is like a really great model. So first off, um, the data is just really well done. Um, obviously they're training with really high res uh, quality photographers, that sort of thing. Whereas, you know, the problem with a lot of open source super res models is they're training off data they scrape off the internet. So, you know, it's not working as, as well with like really good photographers. Um, so here's an example here of like one of my GAN images uh, run through a super resolution network. And you'll see they've got some options here of you new know, sort of default 2x, 4x, 6x. Um, you can work with specific hip, hip, uh, widths or heights. Um, usually what I do is actually just run cycli cyc cyclically, uh, cyclically through uh, various sizing. So I'll start at 2x and then I'll do another 2x to get to 4x, another 2x to get to 8x, that sort of thing. So that's sort of how I work, but you can play with uh, these individual sizes here as well. Um, and when you switch, like there's usually a little bit of a lag time uh, to generate the preview, but what I really like is they do uh, cache these results. So like you can sort of switch back and forth and it's not looking at a huge, you know, that preview took a, a couple seconds, but not very long. Um, so really like, you know, just sort of seeing this. The preview here is great because you can sort of see what it looked like if you were just doing like, I guess, bilinear or whatever um, versus, you know, their model where you really do see new detail as it, as it scales up. Um, my new favorite thing they do is this new mode. Um, I assume this is basically like stuff they've trained on different data sets. Um, so they have a bunch of different settings here, right? So there's a standard one, which is sort of, I believe, their like default model that they've always had. There is architectural. Um, so this, I assume, is trained on like photos of buildings, man-made objects, like those sort of things. Um, so you can upload or you can change these previews and sort of see how that affects your image. Um, this preview does take a little bit longer, but I, the nice thing about it is it is cached. So um, you can actually switch back and forth. So uh, once this loads up a little bit, I'll show you an example of what this looks like. There we go, kicking in. Cool. So you can sort of see like, this is the architectural model. Oh, is it really gonna go through and, okay, it's a little bit faster. This is standard. Ah. Okay, so previously, for a reason, this was caching in a really nice way where I could actually switch back and forth between the two. Um, so what you might have to do is actually just download a couple of these examples and just sort of see which ones you like best. Um, there's also an art mode. So this is, I obviously assume, is trained on like high-res art photography. Um, so if you have more artistic textures like paint strokes or other things, you might want to play with that. If you have uh, you know, building photos or more like man-made, maybe 3D uh, architectural drawings you want to blow up, like try the architectural standard uh, model. Um, I've also found a lot of success with the compressed model, which I believe probably like, you know, JPEGs the hell out of an image when it when it downsamples it. Um, and I've actually found like, especially with some of the GAN images that I'm running through like Big Buy GAN or Attention GAN or other things, I actually find the compressed setting tends to do a really, really good job. Um, it sort of makes a lot of these um, JPEG artifacts a bit smoother. It gives you a little bit better detail. So um, this is like hands down why I really pretty much suggest like using this tool. Um, there are also these really, really nice settings about suppressing noise and removing blur. Um, I play with these a lot. Uh, it is sort of up to you on how your image works um, to, to mess with that. Um, lastly, there's also some additional settings here of uh, reducing color bleed, which I don't really know exactly what that does. Um, 
but I, I would assume having it turned on is probably a good idea unless you've got a really like maybe blurry image that or like a like a bouquet or whatever and you want to sort of keep a little bit of that blurriness um and then face refinement so this is uh there was sort of maybe some controversy a little bit a uh, little couple months ago where someone had actually turned this on um while running it on architectural images and it would find faces and that's the point of this so like i don't know it's kind of silly that they were like making this thing big at it and blowing it out of proportion but uh if you have faces in your image and you want those to feel really crisp and more up up res um, there is a face refinement feature. So you can see here, like they built in a bunch of the different model parameters and other things. So like, this is like just hands down, like the really best quality tool. And it really is, is versatile. Um, I'll say they've updated this in a nice way where like it used to be when I would, uh, save this out and like use 4X or whatever, it would like crush my computer. Couldn't do anything else while I was doing it. Now it's actually pretty fast. And, um, I find that I can do other things while I'm using it. There's also some nice, um, sort of features here for saving images out. So hit a save um, and this jumps right over here and you'll see like obviously going 256 to 512 was pretty fast. Um, so I might recommend, you know, again, doing this with a couple different uh, settings, um, just sort of see uh, which setting turns out best for you. So, um, you know, the folks at Topaz Labs aren't paying me to talk about this stuff, um, but it is helpful to mention that they are actually, f I think between now and the end of the year, running a 30% off sale. So I believe Gigapixel AI so one of the downsides of Gigapixel AI is you do have to pay for it. Um, it's usually $100. Um, and I would say I think $100 also comes with a year worth of updates. And then after a year, they ask you to like re not rebuy it. It's like a discounted rebuy um, to get the latest updates. So right now they're doing a 30% off sale, um, which I will link to. Basically, I think it's just if you go to the site and whatever price is there is sort of the 30% off. But I also have a referral code where... Uh, full disclosure, I do get a kickback, but it gives you an additional 15% off. So it's 30% off and then 15% off. Um, so you can, I believe, get this for like something like $55 now. Um, so for a year of like updates, other things, it's well, well worth it. Um, if you're selling prints or other things, you pretty much have to do some sort of up res in order to um, make high quality prints. So like this is a great tool to do that. Um, this is basically the, the process that I run all my prints through. Um, so just thought I'd give you a quick update on sort of Gigapixel AI. I will link to uh, my referral code in the show notes um, if you're interested. Um, again, it does give me a, like a $10 kickback, but like I think it's such a great tool that uh, yeah, I wouldn't really recommend something if I just wanted money back. Um, but it is a cool tool. I think it's uh, really, really worthwhile, and I'm definitely seeing them update you know fairly frequently. Um, so I think it's totally worthwhile to stay updated on, on the latest tool. Um, cool, so that's it for this video. Um, if you have questions about this or other super resolution networks, uh, please feel free to drop me a note and I'll see you next time. Thanks.